In a previous video that we did, I touched on changing the uh, color of waypoints, the size of the waypoints, and you can also do the same for the track. So let's go into a little bit more detail on how to do that. I'm going to click on the waypoint create box up here on the top, and I'm just going to put in half a dozen waypoints around the Mansfield area that we know quite well. It doesn't matter where they are, because for the sake of the exercise, um, we're just going to give you a look on on how it actually uh, how they can be changed. Now, if I bring up the waypoint uh, box, there's my I'll hold the mouse down and bring that up. There's my half a dozen waypoints, and each one, as you see, I click on it and highlight it. It gets highlighted in there, so. I'll unclick this waypoint create at the same time, so I'm not going to do another one. So if I click on number three, it's showing me number three there. If I click on number five or four, sorry, it's showing me four down here. And so it goes. If I wanted number four to be in the center of the screen, we've done this before, but you just hit the little bullseye and there's four there right in the middle. All right, and I'm going to just drag that down a bit so we can see it a bit easier. Now I could change the size of number four just by double clicking on it and bringing up its it's a pro, um, properties box and the size is saying it's 6 so if I increase that to say 12 and save it you can see that now there's number 3 there's number 4 it's much bigger so you can do that individually if you want if you'd like to do them all then there's a little box up here which is the select functions and you can go select all now you can see they're all highlighted okay and there's another button here, Change Properties. You drop this down and we'll change the font size. Now the font size is 10. And I'm going to increase that, say, to 25. And change. And there they are. Now, and then if I close the box and get rid of that, they're not highlighted anymore, but there's my half a dozen waypoints. Now, if, not really necessary too much when you're working close in, but if I was doing a map a, a track you know further across so uh, across Victoria and I wanted to scroll out and keep adding waypoints and seeing where they all were as you scroll out the small ones get very small but as you go further and further out here you can almost get the whole map of Victoria and you can still see where your six waypoints are so it is handy for just for viewing when you're doing longer tracks but if you're sort of just working around one area it's probably not that necessary now I'll just scroll back in here and uh, we'll stay around the Ptolemy area. I'll get rid of these off the map. So if I go map, clear all waypoints from the map, clear them from the map. Yes, now it's asking me a double check here. I haven't saved the waypoint file. Do I want to save it before I close it? No, I don't. We'll just get rid of them. Okay, so that's changing the size and you can change the color using that same um, box you can change the background color and things like that um, now tracks you can do something similar so let's just bring in a track and if I go up to your file load and load track from file uh, when we were up at Tolmy with the club a couple of years ago or last year um, we did a day trip I did it let a day trip out uh, to Lake William Hovel and out to and up to Tomahawk Hut, which was a bit of a climb as it turned out. Uh, it was supposed to be a nice drive through the country. It turned out to be pretty much double black. Now, I've got here uh, three uh, tracks which were told me to William Hovel. I've renamed those um, myself. From they would have um, well, these ones were actually when I started to plot the track using this map and as we did in the other video I was just making a making a track plot you can see that I did that on the 21st and the 22nd this one here on the 28th is the actual recorded track that we actually drove on the date and I'll show you the difference in a second let's bring this one up on the, I did on the 22nd and there's the track and if I scroll in a bit you'll see that I've clicked here here and it's not following the road with all those little curves in the road and there's a track going down here that I've, I've did what we did in the other video and sort of cut corners and ended up with a pretty rough idea. The idea was that I wanted to see how far it was. Now if I go up to the uh, track control box, 97.13 kilometres. So I knew that the, the trip we were going to do for the day was probably, by the time you do all these bends, was probably more like 110 or 15 or something like that. But I had a pretty good idea of how far we were going to go. 
Now, the the difference and let's okay, let's just change the the uh, details of that track. So if I double click on it and bring up the box, here's where I change the color. I can make it yellow if I want or whatever. Um, and and I can save it at that. I can actually change the um, change the width of the track. So if it's on four, and you can see, you know, you can get to the point where it's really not really worth much, but it may help if you want to increase it a little bit here and there. So I'm going to close that. Um, I'll bring in now, you can see this track here has got 56 points. So when I created it, there's 56 times I've clicked to go right around this whole circuit to get all the way back to Ptolemy to work it out. If I bring in another track, and you can overlay tracks on top of one another, I'll load track from file. Um, where are we? There we are. And this time I'll load the Ptolemy William Lake William Hovel Tomahawk Hut that we did on the 28th of November. Now, I'm going to make that a little bit more visible. You can see that if you click on each one, it highlights the track. So you can see the uh, actual recorded track overlaying on top of the other one. Um, I might just change the color of this one so that it's a little bit easier to see and I'll just increase the size a little bit and close. Okay so there's the one I planned and there's the one that we actually did. Uh, the difference being that this track that we actually did it recorded along the way it was 111.19 kilometers so we were pretty close with our 97 and adding a bit for the corners um, and it had 3474 points so to replicate that track on, on here, I would have had to click it 3,474 times and follow every single curve and corner. Um, and you can see, if I scroll in a bit, that it actually it doesn't always follow the roads because, you know, the maps are what they are. And you can see even along here, it's we've squiggled a bit, but we've essentially followed the road. Um, whereas I cut the corner here on the plan, this has gone right around the road down this track and it's been pretty faithful following following the uh, the the map the whole way around i'm going to uh, bring up something else now i'll just show you if i take this scroll way back a bit there's another option up here and it says it's a little box options box more options if i click down here and go to track profile i uh, might do it on this one hang on I'm going to take this one out first of all. We're going to clear the selected track. Okay, I'm going to clear that one for a minute and bring it back in as track number one. So we'll load it back in again because I've made some changes to it. Load track from file and the 28th, this one here. There it is, there back where it was. Now I'll bring up the track box again and then drop down, it's highlighted, so drop down this box and go track profile. Now this one has got uh, two axes, the horizontal being time, so it starts from zero and it finishes at about six and a half hours just over on that bottom bar and the vertical being altitude. So at any point along the track I could click in here that mouse point and the time was four hours just over four hours the altitude at the time was 649.7 um, it's giving me the latin along as well and it's also giving me a speed of 10.6 and the heading that i was doing and the date and the time as well so what was really interesting is when we came out of william hovel um, and you can actually see here we were having lunch so we weren't doing anything, no change over this period of time. So it even I can even see from when we stopped for lunch and when we started again because the timeline's still running. And then between here at the four hour mark where the altitude was 418.9 metres to up the top here where the altitude was 1161. So we climbed, um, you know, you're looking at about what's 716 uh, metres on in the space of maybe four hours up to 4.5 so in 30 minutes just over 30 minutes we climbed a long way and it was a long climb you can see this here 
So this track profile, and then of course, once you anything that must that goes up, it's got to come back down, and we came all the way back down, and then we drove the road back up from uh, the main Mansfield Road back up to Tolmy, um, which is pretty much where we started. So if I look at the end there, um, 777.6 metres there. If I go back to the start, it's going to be very close, 760. So I haven't clicked exactly on the start there, but it's this 785. So starting point, finishing point, and then the altitude of the track in between. Really handy to have a look at uh, later on and wonder. This section here was what we did was the double black. And when I looked at that, I realised how far we'd actually gone up in, in such a short period of time. And it was over rocks and everything else. Anyway, um, again, we could change this uh, this colour to whatever we like. We can change the size. Oh, that's not a very good colour. We'll go dead out a bit more and close it. So you can see that you can play around with them. Um, when you do save those changes, it will save, but it, what, it, what it won't do, and, and um, particularly save for waypoints, it won't save the large waypoints if you transfer that file to your tablet. Uh, it'll go back to the standard um, default size that the tablet accept, uh, will accept. You can change them again once you get them into the tablet, but it's really not that important. Once you've made them on the desktop computer and put them into the tablet, it's really what you're looking for is the distance between them. You don't really need them to be any bigger on your tablet screen. It's not really that relevant. So uh, that's changing colours, sizes and uh, showing you the profile of a track and also the waypoint.